the open come enrichment session on the topic healthy way of living millet for wellness today we have a very renowned resource person with us dr dd nambudri who is a former dean kerala university of fisheries and ocean studies kochi so before uh, i uh, invite our regional director i would just like to highlight few points about the innovation club session which we are holding at regional center kochi under regional center kochi the innovation club sessions are usually held with an objective to enrich and generate awareness amongst the learners of igno on a wide range of topics ranging from time management career management e support services of igno entrepreneurial opportunities available innovations in ict interventions in education and life skills for a successful living even we have conducted uh, innovation club sessions on culture of body centrism and pace in life relevance of gandhi today and such topics uh, we are identifying which will be beneficial to our students and the public in general so it's also a platform for the students to resolve their grievances with respect to the subject the student is pursuing in igno uh, so as we all know today's uh, innovation uh, club session is on the topic healthy way of living millet for wellness and uh, as we all know the theme for the international year of millets 2023 is harnessing the untapped potential of millets for food security nutrition and sustainable agriculture in fact this lecture on the eve of international year of millet has also has been coupled with this open uh, come and session come enrichment session at regional center kochin and now i formally uh, invite our regional director dr j s dorothy madam to kindly welcome our resource person for the session dr d d nambudri sir since so i have the pleasure to introduce you to the resource person for the lecture on the eve of international year of millet which has been coupled with the innovation club activities of regional center kochi uh, uh, dr d d nambudri former dean kerala university of fisheries and ocean studies kochi dr d d nambudri pursued his msc in food technology from un fao international food technology training center mysore university and phd in biochemistry from kochi university of science and technology qsat kochi professor uh, dd nambudri began his professional career at cftri mysore since 1976 dr dd nambudri served as the at the newly formed department of industrial fisheries at qsat kochi it is pertinent to mention that the school of industrial fisheries was established in 1976 as the department of industrial fisheries under the uh, university of kochi for post graduate teaching and research on all aspects of fisheries and science and technology the department was elevated to the status of the school under qsat since 1995 by recognizing the multidisciplinary nature of the program and the progress achieved in teaching research and out, outreach activities in various facets of fisheries dr d d nambudri has also worked as the dean kerala university of fisheries and ocean studies and having a total service in teaching and research in food science and technology for over 38 years Dr. D. D. Nambudri also worked as visiting faculty at the European Union, at Ireland, Belgium, and also at the uh, African continent. Dr. D. D. Nambudri had published several research papers and uh, also books, and he has functioned in various capacities, such as the vice president for the Society of Fisheries Technologists. the member academic council kochi university of science and technology kochi and kerala agriculture university tirchur uh, member research council karnataka university at bidar 
and uh, the management council of central institute of fisheries uh, technology cochin and research advisory committee central agriculture research institute port blair sir has also presented research paper in various conferences and chat se section uh, session on risk assessment and analysis in symposium on food safety held at japan and sir has also worked as expert agriculture scientist recruitment board new delhi and at the kerala public service commission we are really grateful to have professor dd nambudri with us on the eve of the uh, lecture related to the international year of millets 2023 and also we, we are also grateful uh, that this session will be also be a enrichment session for the innovation club activity today which will take uh, give us some take home message for the learners who are a part of the grievance redressal over to professor nambudri please thank you uh, dr j s toroki regional director uh, uh, igno regional center cochin uh, greetings to all the academic counselors then um, other uh, dignitaries in uh, the meeting uh, dr uh, Binod from Nis Church Vanda, uh, Mr. Unikrishna, an industrialist, and uh, all dear students. I compliment uh, uh, Igno for uh, organizing this uh, enrichment session. Uh, this is a continuous uh, uh, program, as I understand. understand. uh and uh, today's uh, session is mainly on a uh, healthy way of living uh we have chosen uh, millet uh, as uh, the uh we have chosen millet as the theme for this today's uh, session millet uh, for wellness uh okay uh, in the introductory speech uh, prasida has uh, uh, already said about uh, millets and its importance uh, the international year of uh, millets uh, of course there is a renewed interest uh, in millets uh, of late uh, maybe because uh, this was adopted uh, as uh, the Uh, this year 2023 is taken as the international year of uh, millets uh, what are millets uh, these are cereals uh, similar to the cereal grains all of you know that uh, they are similar to the cere uh, cereal grains uh, but uh, they are small in size very small as compared to the cereals uh, there are many millets uh which are uh, small and uh, the smallest uh, uh, there are uh, millets such as cordo millet little millet you know fox tail prosa millet barnyard millets these are very uh, small in size small grains and uh, they used to be the staple food for the uh, millions of people mainly in the arid and semi arid tropics of the world see arid tropics uh, semi arid means where uh, these are dry lands mostly where uh, not uh, much water availability is there for uh, cultivation of water needed uh, cereals like rice wheat etc as already uh, mentioned uh, 2023 is the international year of uh, millets uh, in fact uh, this is uh, based on a proposal from india uh, that uh, the un has uh, approved and proposed the 2023 as the international year of uh, millet there are uh, people behind this like uh, professor khader wali 
uh, he is known as the millet man of India, who uh, renewed uh, interest uh, in millets. Uh, he is a renowned uh, food and nutrition specialist, and uh, he has uh, he has been uh, awarded Padma Sri. He has been uh, uh, awarded by the government of India Padma Sri. Uh, and uh, he said the millets are an extremely good source of fiber and protein. Uh, as uh, you know that India is uh, the largest uh, producer of millet among uh, the globe. Uh, the latest figure that is 2021. Uh, that shows that 41% of the global production is from India. And uh, this is followed by some of uh, the African uh, countries uh, like Niger, for example, it is uh, 12%, uh, so nearly one fourth of uh, the India's production and uh, China is 8%. India also ranks uh, 12th among uh, those countries that produce uh, high yields of uh, millet. Uh, of course, uh, the yield is not uh, as good as uh, other cereals like rice and wheat, uh, which have been subject to the, to the Green Revolution. Uh, but uh, millet yield is comparatively less. That is one drawback of uh, millet cultivation. There are many states which are uh, producing millets in India. Uh, the major states are Rajasthan, mostly the North Indian uh, states like Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Haryana, Gujarat, uh, and uh, Madhya Pradesh. These are uh, the leading states uh, producing millets uh, in India. In fact, uh, the three states are put together, that is Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, and uh, Madhya Pradesh. They account over for more than 81% of uh, the total share of millets produced in India. So these are the three states, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, and Madhya Pradesh. Uh, I have shown some figures uh, here. Uh, Rajasthan, 83 lakh tons. Uh, that is the annual production. Uttar Pradesh, uh, 46 uh, odd lakh tons. Gujarat, uh, 17.5 lakh. Madhya Pradesh, 49.5 lakh. Haryana, 14, uh, uh, around 14 lakh. And uh, compared to these states, uh, uh, our share, the Kerala share is uh, meager uh, 690 tons. That is uh, the uh, annual production. Of course, there are uh, uh, different uh, reasons why Kerala is uh, back in amulet production, uh, mainly because of uh, the prolonged uh, monsoon. And also, there are no um, uh, pro programs uh, supporting uh, the growth of uh, millets in, uh, as far as Kerala is concerned. So, in fact, uh, traditionally, this is... Uh, one of uh, the staple foods of millions of people uh, in Africa and uh, Asian countries. Uh, you know that uh, in our uh, country also millet, uh, I remember uh, in our earlier days, uh, there were uh, millet uh, products like chama, uh, etc. These were used uh, for uh, some of the dishes prepared. Uh, in fact, uh, this was... Uh, totally almost replaced by the three cereal crops, that is rice, wheat, and maize. So with the influx of uh, these three, uh, big three, they are called the big three uh, major staple foods, uh, millets uh, have gone to the background. Now the, uh, the scenario is changing. India is uh, putting a lot of um, uh, effort in uh, developing uh, this uh, technology, the agricultural practices, uh, then increasing production of millets. One of the institutes, uh, the Indian Institute of Millet Research, uh, which was established uh, 
as a research station in 1958. Uh, now it has been uh, elevated to the status of an ICR institute in the year 2014. This is uh, established in Hyderabad. There are about 50 scientists working in um, uh, IIMR under uh, 17 disciplines. So this institute does support uh, the farming community uh, in various aspects of uh, millet farming and uh, the technology required uh, for uh, harvesting and uh, post-harvest uh, technology, etc. Yeah, why we uh, promote a millet? In fact, uh, millets have been nicknamed as uh, the nutri cereals because of uh, the nutritional aspects of the nutritional uh, property of millets. Uh, they are called as uh, the nutri cereals. Uh, they can lower uh, the risk of developing uh, mainly type 2 diabetes. Millet uh, regular consumption can um, reduce uh, the cholesterol level and uh, reduce iron deficiency anemia because millets are rich in uh, uh, iron and it can reduce uh, iron deficiency anemia. This is one of uh, the major uh, issues uh, in um, many parts of the country. Not only uh, the nutritional property, uh, millets as a uh, uh, as a plant, uh, they are resilient to extreme conditions of uh, temperature and drought. So they are resilient uh, to the extremity. Uh, in fact, uh, our farmers in the earlier uh, days, uh, they were using uh, cultivating millets uh, as an insurance against the vagaries of the Indian monsoon. So if uh, the monsoon is poor, uh, still a millet can resist uh, that. Now, uh, it is not uh, the, not only we are facing in the vagaries of monsoon, we are also facing uh, the climate change. That is another uh, uh, issue as far as uh, the world is facing. The meteorological organization indicate that is a, likelihood of uh, increasing temperature by 1.5 degrees Celsius within the next five years. So this is, uh, we have to go for uh, crops which can uh, withstand, uh, resist uh, such uh, vagaries of uh, monsoon and uh, also the climate change. The Cereal crops which we cultivate, you know that uh, rice is, uh, paddy is one crop which uh, needs a lot of water. Uh, you need a lot of water not only for uh, uh, paddy but uh, also sugar cane. <clears throat> uh, cotton also needs a lot of water. In fact, uh, cultivation of uh, this as resulted in an increase in 0.009% uh, 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 distance between the ground level and the groundwater level. That is, uh, the groundwater has uh, gone down uh, by about 0.009%. So that is one uh, problem uh, as far as uh, uh, some of uh, the cereal crops are concerned. And... Uh, you have read uh, recently in uh, the paper the impact of uh, groundwater extraction on uh, even Earth's uh, rotational axis. Uh, there is a slight change uh, in the rotational axis of uh, the Earth, it was reported due to groundwater uh, extraction. So these are uh, uh, reasons, uh, mainly the nutritional uh, property of the millets and it's uh, resistance, uh, resilient uh, to extreme conditions of uh, temperature and drought. Uh, that's why uh, millet should be promoted. Uh, there are uh, many, many uh, millets. I have given some of uh, the Malayalam names of uh, millets like uh, 
finger millet uh, that is uh, the common one available uh, in Kerala that is ragi Kodo millet is kuvaragu uh, fox tail millet uh, is uh, thina little millet you know uh, chama barnyard millet uh, covered up pullu uh, pearl millet uh, that is uh, kambam and uh, sorghum is another uh, millet uh, that is uh, the common chola these are some of the common names of popularly available millets in uh, Kerala. Pearl millet is uh, one of uh, India's largest uh, uh, production pearl millet. A large amount of uh, extent of area, around 9 million hectares, uh, uh, we are cultivating uh, pearl millet. Uh, rich in protein 7.3, fiber 3.6, iron uh, 3.9. You can prepare uh, ready to serve breakfast food and uh, other uh, products from uh, pearl millet. Finger millet is uh, a ragi. In fact, uh, this was originally cultivated in uh, the Ethiopian highlands and uh, later uh, introduced uh, to India, maybe around 4,000 years uh, back. So the major uh, producers uh, other than India are Uganda, Nepal, China. Uh, finger millet uh, comparatively have uh, high yield potential and has got uh, good uh, storage stability also. In India, the major uh, finger millet uh, growing states are uh, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, and uh, Tamil Nadu. Other than, uh, as I mentioned, uh, some of uh, the North Indian states also. Karnataka, it is uh, one of uh, the common uh, cereal cultivated. Uh, foxtail uh, millet is another important uh, uh, millet crop. Millets uh, generally, you know that in uh, Europe, uh, millets are mainly cultivated for uh, uh, as an animal feed material, uh, other than food, mostly for animal feed. Uh, mill foxtail millets are also grown for food and feed in China. They are generally have a light cream in color, uh, the plant. The plant, uh, uh, the millet uh, gets a maturity uh, by around 70 to 120 days. Uh, as a food product, uh, foxtail millets have a sweet and nutty flavor. And uh, there are many products prepared out of uh, fox tail millets like instant foods, ready to eat products, uh, fox tail flour, etc. So they, uh, they have many culinary uses and uh, fox tail millets are uh, normally considered as a farmer friendly uh, uh, millet crop, having high protein content 12.3. Uh, percent uh, protein in uh, the gray. Uh, little millet, uh, the common chama we know that uh, available in Kerala also. Uh, little millet, not uh, little in nutrition. They are rich in uh, potent uh, antioxidants. Uh, they help prevent uh, diabetes mellitus helps uh, lower cholesterol. Little millets uh, can also be used for weight loss and uh, the cure uh, uh, respiratory illness or improve the respiratory conditions. They are, uh, I told you, they are great in nutrition. They have uh, low uh, 
glycemic index and uh, they are also rich in uh, dietary fiber. Glycemic index, I shall explain later, that uh, prevents the rapid rise in uh, blood glucose level. Uh, little minute uh, also is rich in magnesium, uh, which uh, promotes the cardiovascular conditions. Uh, it is also uh, rich in niacin, which adds uh, aids in the reduction of uh, cholesterol. There are different uh, methods of uh, preparation of uh, little millets. Prosa millet is another uh, uh, millet, prosa millet. Uh, another one is uh, cordo millet. See, all are uh, very small grains. That is uh, the major difference uh, between uh, the other cereals like rice, wheat, maize, etc. Uh, sorghum, uh, uh, known as uh, cholam or java, is also a major uh, millet crop. It, it is considered uh, as a millet crop. Uh, one of the staple crops of uh, people living in the semi-arid uh, areas. For millions of people living in the semi-arid uh, areas. Sorghum is also known as uh, the king of millets. It's known as uh, the king of uh, millets. The main ingredient in uh, sorghum is uh, starch. Uh, uh, the advantage of uh, the starch in sorghum is uh, that it is digested uh, more slowly than in other cereals. So the digestion process of uh, uh, starch, not only in sorghum, in many other uh, millets also is very slow as compared to other. Uh, that is uh, good in uh, uh, the diabetic patients. So there is a slow increase in uh, the starch level. Uh, and uh, glucose level in the body. Sorghum is also uh, rich in uh, phenolic uh, chemicals. Many of other phenol phenolic chemicals. What is the importance of uh, these polyphenols and other uh, uh, phenolic chemicals uh, that uh, they act as uh, body's uh, natural uh, defense against uh, uh, oxidative stress. So the, it's uh, a natural antioxidant property, polyphenols. Uh, they prevent uh, the oxidative stress in uh, the body by converting highly reactive electrophilic species, uh, which are produced uh, in the body the highly reactive electrophilic species, uh, they are converted uh, to harmless and uh, excretable metabolites. So that's how uh, they reduce uh, the oxidative stress of uh, the body. Sorghum is uh, rich in uh, phenolic chemicals. Uh, that's why uh, that uh, this millet is known as uh, the king of uh, millets. Uh, here I have uh, shown the nutritional uh, composition of uh, uh, some of uh, the millets. Mainly it is compared uh, with uh, the rice and uh, wheat, the nutritional composition. Like for example, uh, sorghum, uh, it is having a 10.4 uh, gram protein in 100 gram, 10.4 gram. Uh, whereas uh, the rice has uh, 6.8. Iron content in uh, sorghum is uh, 4.1. Uh, that of uh, rice is 0. 0.7. Of course, wheat has got uh, 5.3 iron uh, content. Uh, take a foxtail millet, for example. Uh, uh, 
uh, it has got uh, highest protein content 12.3 percent protein oxtail millet higher than all the millets uh, prosa millet also has uh, you can see in the table prosa millet also has got uh, 12.5 percent protein so much higher than uh, the protein content in rice uh, which is 6.8 uh wheat 11.8 maize 11.1 so these are the big three cereals rice wheat and uh, maize foxtail millet uh, has got fiber content and that is one aspect uh, very rich in uh, fiber content uh, 8 percent 8 gram 100 gram that is uh, the uh, fiber content in foxtail millet. Compare that with the rice only 0.2 percent whereas uh, foxtail millet has 8 uh, percent uh, rice uh, I mean uh, fiber content. Greater than wheat uh, which is 1.2 uh, maize it is 2.7. Corda millet has got uh, 10 percent uh, fiber content. So similarly barnyard millet uh, 10.1 percent so these are uh, three uh, millets having uh, the highest uh, fiber content you know that uh, of late uh, the value of fiber in uh, fighting diabetes and in uh, also in uh, 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 digestive system movement of food in uh, the digestive tract Uh, mineral content, uh, uh, there are many minerals I have not shown separately like magnesium etc. Very important minerals. Uh, foxtail millet has got 3.3% uh, uh, mineral content. Uh, barnyard millet 3.2. Whereas uh, rice has got only 0.6. Uh, wheat has 1.5. And uh, maize has 1.5. Almost uh, uh, half of uh, that in uh, millets. Iron also, uh, iron is uh, one another important compound uh, uh, like uh, pearl millet having 8% uh, uh, iron content. I'm uh, sorry, not 8%, it is in milligram. Uh, 8 milligram uh, iron content. Per millet, eight milligram. That is, uh, and little millet, uh, the the common chama, it it has got nine point three milligram iron. So that's uh, uh, the shows uh, the importance of uh, millet. See, uh, rice has got only point seven uh, milligram, whereas uh, little millet has got nine point three. So one need uh, go for little millet rather than go for uh, iron tablets in. Uh, uh, such uh, iron deficiency conditions, a regular consumption of uh, uh, little millet. Another important uh, mineral is uh, uh, calcium. Uh, calcium, uh, the finger millet, uh, the common raggy, has got 344 milligram calcium, the highest uh, in all the cereals. 344 uh, milligram calcium, whereas uh, rice has got uh, 10 milligram or maize has got uh, 10 milligram, wheat has 41. Uh, the finger millet, uh, the common raggy has got 344. So one need not go for uh, calcium tablets. And uh, of late it is reported that uh, uh, going for calcium tablets um, is not uh, that advisable as compared to go for a natural source of uh, calcium. So in that case, uh, finger millet uh, is one uh, which can be recommended as uh, one source of calcium in uh, calcium deficient uh, conditions. So this gives an overall uh, idea about the nutritional uh, uh, composition of millets. Other than uh, the major nutrients, uh, like uh, 
carbohydrate, protein, etc. Millets also include uh, uh, resistant starch, uh, starch which are resistant, to, partially resistant to the digestive enzymes. Uh, then oligosaccharides, lipids, antioxidants such as I already mentioned to you, uh, some of the antioxidants, its uh, purpose, antioxidants such as phenolic acids, flavonoids, uh, uh, lignans, phytosterols, etc. So they are uh, present uh, in uh, as important nutrients in millets. And uh, these antioxidants and uh, other uh, uh, nutrients such as resistant starch, oligosaccharides, lipids, etc., they are responsible for the many health uh, benefits of uh, millets. You say that millets are nutri cereals. What causes um, millets nutrient rich? I have uh, listed here some of the health benefits of millets. Uh, they are anti acidic, uh, anti acidic food. It does not uh, produce uh, gas or uh, they are uh, anti acidic. Uh, they are gluten free. That is one important uh, uh, aspect of uh, millet. See, uh, there are certain people allergic to gluten. Millets are uh, gluten free. Millets uh, detoxify body. Uh, the vitamin B3 or niacin in millet can help uh, lower cholesterol. It prevents uh, breast cancer. Helps to prevent uh, type 2 diabetes. I'm not recommending it's a cure for diabetes, but uh, it can prevent uh, incidence of uh, type 2 diabetes. Uh, effective in reducing uh, blood pressure. They are uh, they aid in uh, treating respiratory conditions such as asthma, etc. Uh, they help to optimize uh, kidney, liver, and uh, immune system health. It's a prebiotic uh, feeding microflora. It, it is uh, good for the microflora in uh, the inner uh, ecosystem. A good microflora. So some of uh, the health tags uh, when you tag uh, the millet, uh, uh, they are gluten free, high fiber, uh, anti-diabetic food, mineral rich food, uh, multi-benefit foods, and uh, millets uh, are the most required food for uh, lifestyle diseases. Now everybody talk about uh, lifestyle diseases. So millet is an option to go for uh, against uh, the lifestyle diseases. One of the important uh, property of millets is uh, that, uh, as I mentioned, it can manage and reduce uh, the risk of uh, developing diabetes mellitus. So one of the most important lifestyle disease affecting, inflicting millions of people in Kerala. Even in the world, globally, it is estimated that there will be a 51% surge in diabetic cases. Uh, that is from the present 463 million to 700 million in 2045. So they, this is one uh, major uh, lifestyle disease expected uh, to affect uh, the global community, mainly with uh, type 2 diabetes. Uh, because type 2 diabetes uh, forms about 90% of the uh, total uh, diabetes. What causes uh, diabetes mellitus? It's uh, mainly a sedentary lifestyle. That is uh, one reason, the sedentary lifestyle, which is uh, the curse of uh, the modern uh, age. And also the type of food consumed, that also plays a key role in uh, 
uh, incidence of uh, diabetes. So millet uh, can help manage diabetes. Uh, how it can help manage diabetes? Mainly to uh, due to the high fiber content, polyphenols, and antioxidant properties. Uh, millets have a, a low glycemic index. Millets generally have got a low uh, glycemic index. What is, uh, you know, the glycemic index? It is, uh, uh, how do you rate the carbohydrates? The starch of carbohydrates in the food based on their ability to increase the blood sugar levels. Glycemic index uh, rates uh, the carbohydrates are uh, based on uh, its ability to increase uh, the blood sugar level once it is uh, consumed. So it's a number from 0 to 100 assigned to a food with uh, glucose having uh, the value 100. That means on consumption of glucose, there is a rapid increase uh, in the blood glucose level. So it is uh, having a glycemic index of uh, 100. Uh, millets, uh, uh, whereas have got an average uh, uh, glycemic index of 52. Uh, that is its average uh, glycemic index of millets which is about 36% lower than that of uh, uh, typical staple food like uh, milled rice. The glycemic index of uh, rice is uh, 71.7, whereas uh, average uh, millet uh, GI is 52.7. Wheat has got a glycemic index of 74.2. So this shows that uh, there is not much difference between rice and uh, meat as far as uh, the glycemic index is concerned. Both will uh, show to the blood glucose level as it is consumed. Whereas uh, millets uh, like pearl millet, finger millet, cordo millet, little millet and sorghum, they, they are called... Uh, millets with an intermediate uh, glycemic index. Studies have shown that uh, long-term uh, millet consumption lowers uh, uh, not only the fasting, uh, but also the postprandial uh, blood glucose levels, significantly by 12 to 15 percent. Millets also reduce uh, the HPA1C level in uh, the blood. You know that of late, uh, the technicians check the HPA1C uh, to know whether uh, you are diabetic or not. It's a simple uh, blood test that measures the average blood sugar level over the past three months. Uh, this, uh, this is mainly because uh, the glucose uh, causes uh, glycation of the hemoglobin. Glucose, when present in the blood, uh, uh, it produces a glycated hemoglobin. And uh, HPA1C is a combination of both the glycated hemoglobin glucose and hemoglobin joined together. Glucose gets uh, uh, attached uh, uh, to the hemoglobin because there is a regular uh, presence of glucose in the blood and it gets attached to the hemoglobin. And uh, consumption of uh, millets uh, over a period of three months have reported to reduce uh, glucose level, uh, I mean uh, HPA1C level in uh, pre-diabetic individuals to Six, uh, from uh, 6.65 to 5.67. Millets are mainly the minimally processed millets are good uh, in uh, effectively reducing uh, the uh, 
glycemic index uh, level as far as uh, the HPA1C level in uh, the blood. I already mentioned to you that the anti-diabetic uh, potentiality of uh, the millets is mainly due to uh, the bioactive substances uh, in the millet like uh, the dietary fiber, polyphenols and uh, flavonoids. Uh, not only that, uh, millets also uh, due to the delayed uh, starch hydrolysis. Uh, compared to cereals, uh, the starch hydrolysis in millets is delayed, uh, slow. So that also reduces uh, the uh, release of sugar into the uh, bloodstream. And uh, also, uh, the presence of resistant starch. I mentioned to you there are certain starch present uh, in uh, the millets which, which are resistant uh, to the digestive enzymes. So uh, you can see that uh, uh, studies have shown that uh, there is a 50% reduction in the HPA1C level uh, on uh, a diet on millet. So a millet-based diet has a positive effect on managing diabetes. So this is one uh, important aspect uh, as far as uh, millet is concerned. Uh, now millets are available uh, uh, in the country. Millets are available in our state also. Uh, but are we buying uh, millets? One major problem with uh, millets uh, or uh, with uh, people are that uh, we are not aware of uh, how to prepare millets in a uh, very tasty manner. Normally, we buy millet, uh, cook it, uh, take it as a porridge. We don't have to eat it. 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 But uh, they should not attract uh, the youth the younger generation they are not uh, interested in these traditional uh, uh, products so that they, we need uh, millet recipes uh, which uh, can help in uh, production of uh, tasty millet food the indian institute of uh, millet research hyderabad has uh, uh, developed uh, the millet recipes uh, which can promote uh, millets uh, uh, to the millet products to the Indian market. You can uh, go to the IIMR uh, website and uh, download uh, the millet recipes. There are uh, uh, many millet recipes uh, shown. Like for example, uh, the sorghum. Sorghum, uh, you can prepare a potato idli from uh, sorghum. Sorghum muffins, uh, uh, a leavened product similar to the bread or cake, you can prepare uh, sorghum muffins. Pearl millet. Uh, Jilebi can be made. All recipes are uh, given in that book. I am only uh, citing a few examples. Paul Miller to Puma. Uh, preparation methods and ingredients. You can refer the book. Paul Miller to Roti. Finger millet, uh, the common ragi, uh, it can be used for uh, preparation of vermicelli gear. Finger millet uh, combined with the vermicelli. Uh, it's also available, uh, the finger millet vermicelli is available in the market. It can be used for production of uh, uh, upuma. Uh, finger millet uh, soft mudda 
uh, this is one of uh, the common uh, ragi product in uh, most uh, many parts of Karnataka. If you go to a house, uh, you can get, uh, they, can, they will offer you finger millet mudde, ragi mudde. Uh, it can be taken with uh, uh, other dishes also. With uh, meat also, with mutton or chicken, it can be taken. Uh, that is uh, the finger millet uh, soft mudde. The product looks like namilda kurukata volyanda. I have uh, taken this uh, while I was in uh, Mysore. Foxtail uh, millet uh, can be used for pr preparing cutlet. Bread uh, can be. You can uh, often uh, find in some bakery the foxtail millet bread. Multi-grain uh, uh, bread are available. Foxtail uh, millet uh, BC Bele bath. It's a very tasty uh, product. Occasionally, I prepare uh, in our house. Uh, you get uh, the masala for uh, BC Bele bath. So mix it uh, uh, with uh, the rice and prepare. Uh, Barnyard millet, uh, uh, along with pudina, you get the pudina rice. Proso millet uh, can be used for production of uh, barfi. Little millet, uh, the chama, uh, can be used. Uh, you know that we prepare chama kanyi. Uh, traditionally, our parents used to make it. Uh, it can also be used for production of tea, that is little millet tea. Multi millet, uh, and now you get uh, the multi millet flour also available. Uh, it can be used for uh, multi millet uh, marchi bhaji. So these are uh, some of uh, the products uh, which can attract uh, the young generation uh, so that uh, they can be uh, slightly taken uh, away from uh, the study, the modern taste. You know, now you go for the taste, not for the nutrition. Our youth uh, go, mainly uh, there are hundreds of uh, tastes uh, available. We know only the four basic tastes, uh, salt, sugar, sweet, uh, etc. So, etc. But uh, hundreds of uh, tastes, uh, they are uh, prepared and products are available. So, the youth go after the taste, not for the health. So, one has to bring them back. Uh, uh, millets is one way that eat millets and stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your wonderful presentation. Sir has, in fact, uh, traced the entire journey of millets right from its beginning. I gave a historical perspective about millets. Sir has also shared the various health benefits of millets and in the in fact, in the end, he has also shared various recipes uh, which can be easily made out of millets. So it was really an enlightening experience hearing to you. Uh, now I throw this floor open. Uh, anyone, of, uh, anyone can share their views, points, or even can ask questions to sir. First of all, let me uh, invite our regional director, Dr. J.S. Dorothy Madam, to comment in this regard. Thank you. Actually, we are grateful, sir. Actually, this lecture came handy uh, as we were planning about the International Year of Millets at Regional Center Cochin. And sir has touched various uh, parts related to the nutritive value, the way it can be used in day-to-day -day living, 
and also how it will have an impact on the various parameters like blood sugar, the uh, the aspects uh, in the uh, related to the triglyceride, the cholesterol, and uh, how it contributes to the good fiber in our diet, the bulk of the uh, food we call it. And we are uh, we also uh, have been hearing about, from sir of how millet can be integrated into our daily living because no we are what we eat so whether our nutritive value can relate to uh, the the nutritive value of the food we eat relate to the healthy condition or the health condition of uh, an individual so how this uh, can be integrated sir has also shared from the routine food items to uh, snack items and also as preservative which you can add uh, take it beyond the day so uh, like uh, sir was talking about the munde then the uh, burfi types and then the uh, bhaji types which can be has to be which has a shelf life of consumption of uh, within a period of time and then what can be used as a flour uh, which can be integrated into uh, multiple recipes uh, later so the more the shelf life is of an of an item then more utility of it across the uh, shelf life period of the item uh, takes place in an individual so this is what i got it from sir this is a presentation okay thank you thank you sir dr prema uh, actually yeah, dr. i think coordinator of uh, uh, LSE 14000 and madam facilitated in uh, identifying the guest for the resource person for the day. Over to Dr. Prema. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, actually, uh, I think uh, Dr. Nambudri is the right person to talk about millet, the utility of the millets and which is important because he is the one, as I know him, uh, the family itself, is the, is a person who is practicing this uh, millet diet every day in the during night he used to uh, he, uh, consume some uh, of the millets i uh, also have gone to millet diet because uh, because of its nutritive value and also easy to prepare uh, everything i am not thanking dr namputri uh, i appreciate your uh, this uh, presentation okay thank you thanks a lot Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I request my colleague, Dr. Viti Jalja Kumari. She is also there to kindly comment upon, share views also. <laughs> Today onwards, I think I will utilize the things I am keeping in my kitchen, uh, in my shelf, because uh, I didn't know the uh, benefits of this millets, uh, how it is facilitating your health and uh, the life lifestyle diseases and all. So I don't know how to express my happiness uh, to hear all these matters from you, sir, Nambudi, sir. So, uh, Prasida, madam, I am very much thankful to you also for finding out and especially to Prema Ma for um, uh, bringing this uh, precious moments of uh, learning, especially, uh, actually it is an education for our livelihood, uh, for sustenance. For that also, I am very much thankful to you. At this uh... I have one uh, very, very, one doubt uh, because I heard earlier that uh, one Ayurvedic doctor told that uh, we should not uh, mix the millet. So have you, have you heard about this one and uh, why, why these doctors are advising not to mix millet? If you are taking one kind of millet in a particular meal, you just go ahead with that one. Don't mix maybe a finger millet with ragi or uh, any other, any other kind of millet. So. Uh, have you any yeah uh, yeah that is uh, that's true in uh, one sense because uh, uh, certain millets uh, even uh, ragi has got a certain anti nutritional uh, factors so uh, normally it can be eliminated uh, by uh, by soaking it or uh, sprouting at the millet uh, these anti nutritional factors uh, uh, disappear but uh, mixing uh, may in that way uh, affect uh, the property of uh, the mix that uh, that's what i think uh, one reason for that yeah probably yes 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 thank you anyway it was very very very, very nice yeah, thank, very you, nice. thank yeah. you okay. 
uh, I will request uh, uh, Dr. Prema and uh, Professor Nambudri, sir, uh, in whichever preference of how you consume it in day-to-day -day living. Is it is only the multi-mix which is available in the shop uh, suffice and how you convert it into a food which is edible? Okay. Uh, generally, uh, uh, the way which I consume is that uh, 100% millet uh, taste, uh, it may not be a relishing, like for example, ragi, if you take uh, to prepare uh, dosha or some other product, idli, partially you mix it, uh, so that is enriching at the floor. Uh, you have the rice floor, mix it or enrich with uh, maybe 50% or 40% uh, millet floor. Uh, that is one way of uh, preparation. So you can have uh, the regular, uh, you can enjoy the regular uh, dish uh, along with the uh, millet. Or you go for uh, other millet, uh, upuma or uh, millet uh, porridge. Uh, certain millets like uh, foxtail millet or uh, little millet, you can prepare a porridge. We used to take uh, the little millet porridge uh, even in the very early days. Only now it has disappeared. So these are some of uh, the ways uh, we can utilize the millets. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. Friends, in every enrichment session uh, or, or any virtual meetings we hold as for today's lecture related to the International Year of Millets and also the enrichment session and the innovation club activity, we take the privilege to share about the Soyam portal, S-W-A-Y-A-M. You may ask me why, because the basic reason is Ignus courses are also listed there. And at the time of enrollment, you may not pay, pay any fee. Only at the time of certification, uh, you can pay the fee and appear for the examination. And the, we are in the era of a national education policy 2020. And the any individual, whether you are a student or an administrator or a teaching faculty or any public who can know to read and write and want to be self-sufficient about the knowledge related to national education policy, you are free to enroll in the national education policy program available in the Soyam portal, and uh, which is also again free of cost for anyone to enroll. And in, uh, in the enrichment session, we also share about life skills, meaning of how you can face certain challenges in your life, especially as a learner in a distance teaching mode. So in a distance teaching institution, any learner is away from the institution, away from the peers, and also away from the text writer who wrote the study material. So definitely there will be hurdles to cross. And what we always say is fulfill the prerequisite when your tomorrow seems to be very dull or very far and you cannot predict. One of the small common things which you always face in our distance teaching institution administration is people will come and say that uh, they could not find uh, a way out to write the examination so they did not apply for the examination and later when that tomorrow which they feared came as today everything cleared and now they want to write the exam but they have not applied so this is where we are to, we are always encouraged please fulfill the prerequisites of what activity it is and when you are uh, traveling with the problem solution always uh, there will be need for evidences of when you have submitted or what you have submitted and the, what is the query based on. Rather than how best we can uh, get only the details from an enrollment number. And we will be having the uh, recording of this video in the YouTube channel of uh, IGNU Regional Center Cochin also. And uh, you can be benefited. So if we are not having we just want to just brief uh, certain things and wind up this session. Any activity with the distance teaching institution, 
will start with access to the program of study and we should aim for successful completion of the program of study the fulfillments which we have to make uh, related to the evaluation process uh, will uh, comprise the internal assessment and the external assessment and the internal assessment we have the assignment components which has to be submitted before giving the term and examination the study materials can be freely downloaded from e gyan gosh website of igno regional center kochi uh, uh, sorry igno center uh, igno regional center kochi also has the link but it is available in the main uh, website www.igno.ac.in i repeat once again the study materials can be downloaded from e gyan gosh link available at www.igno.ac.in and uh, with the study materials when you download there will be a unit which share, uh, tells you what are the topics which are covered in that particular chapter and there will be some self help uh, self fear check exercises so that you can check yourself of how much you have learned after reading particular session and there is a term and examination question uh, uh, the questions available uh, in the in the uh, website www.igno.ac.in and related to those aspects of how you can prepare those questions will be useful so when you are targeting at completion of a program the old question papers available in the website will also can also be put to use and uh, uh, we also want to encourage you that the videos are uh, of the various counseling sessions which has held so far are also uploaded in the igno regional center kochi uh, web uh, youtube channel you can subscribe to us and also follow us in twit uh, in our twitter and instagram account with this i request uh, dr prasita unni krishna to thank uh, Uh, Dr. D. D. Namrudri, sir, for being with us as a resource person, and to the coordinator, Madam Dr. E. K. Prema, for helping us to uh, identify this resource person. Actually, he has served for two different events on the same platform. One is the International Year of Millets. Another is the Enrichment Session for under the Innovation Club activity. and i also request madam to thank the people who facilitated the conduct of this virtual meeting over to professor dr prasita munikish thank you doroti madam uh, in fact sir before i give you the vote of thanks sir i wanted to ask you a brief question i had a, in which i had in mind sir uh, so you talked about the health benefits of millets in a length uh, so can you please also throw some side effects or some of the negative effects if if so anything is there about millets about the conception of millets do uh, do certain people have some like we have many uh, general uh, uh, population which has some allergy towards uh, certain food products sir so are millets also do it do they come under such categories sir generally uh, millets uh, they are uh, all millets are uh, gluten free so there is uh, no problem such as gluten allergy as far as millets are uh, concerned but as i mentioned uh, earlier there are certain anti nutritional factors certain uh, uh, factors we have to look into uh, in uh, certain millets uh, before uh, consuming it in large quantities so uh, you have to uh, look into that certain anti nutritional factors are present in millets especially in uh, finger millet uh, that is there so <clears throat> that have to be checked uh, prior to consumption okay so one more thing recently i saw one product which was advertised that is called millet horlicks sir yeah <laughs> now they have launched something like millet horlicks in the market also sir so is this beneficial what what is your opinion on that sir uh you know that uh, senia for this uh, branded products uh, they they have very very small quantity of uh, the millet uh, uh, in that in that way uh, of course um, it can 
do the same uh, purpose as, uh, as uh, uh, these products are there. Millets, of course, will uh, play its role in that. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. So, I'm uh, first of all, let me thank my regional director, Dr. J.S. Toruti, madam, under whose guidance and leadership this session could be held today. Uh, next, I would like to thank uh, our coordinator of study center, LSC 14000, Dr. A.K. Prema, madam. Uh, in fact, she was the one uh, uh, because of whom I could get in touch with Nambudri, sir. And Nambudri, sir, I'm really grateful to you that you accepted this invitation on such a no short notice and sir readily gave his time and dates due to which this session could be arranged at a very short notice i must say so i'm uh, on behalf of all at igno regional center kochin i'm highly grateful to you sir for this enlightening lecture about millets next i would also like to thank our staff at regional uh, center kochin and my colleagues uh, Dr. V.T. Jalaja Kumari and Dr. S. Vijay Raghavan and other staff uh, who are part of the session uh, because of which the interactions could be made. Next, I would also like to thank the uh, students uh, who have joined uh, for this session. Uh, and I'm sure this, uh, this uh, lecture would be uploaded in the YouTube channel of RC Kuchin. So request all to kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel of RC Kuchin where you can readily access this recorded video I would also like to thank the back office operation teams at Regional Center Kochin, my colleague Sri Mohammad Ansar, Sri Sebastian, Ms. Reshma, because of whom the session could be made possible. So I am highly grateful to each one of you who have taken time out of your busy schedule to attend this se uh, session. So once again, uh, I express my gratitude to one and all. Thank you so much. Thank you.